Olga, it's very nice to have you chatting with us today. I'm wondering, could you tell us a little bit about what you've seen in Russia and globally uh, this past year as far as ART is concerned? Thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to talk a little bit uh, to you. Uh, I think that uh, one of the main achievements, which is actually not only about 2015, but this is the tendency which is continuing that more and more doctors recommend to transfer only one embryo to achieve um, healthy live births of one baby. And that more and more IVF doctors understand that uh, positive clinical pregnancy rates are not, on, not that what we are working for, that uh, our target is a uh, healthy child. So basically, I'm very happy to see that uh, globally and also in uh, Russia and especially in our clinic, so basically with our hands, we a little bit reduce clinical pregnancy rates, but we keep very good statistics for healthy live births. I think that's amazing. I think that's very good. So it's that movement towards single embryo transfers that really stands out for you? Yeah. And uh, also, I'm very happy to see that PGS uh, is come back and uh, that uh, this is the tool which helps us also to increase implantation rates and uh, also to make single elective embryo transfer even more efficient, uh, which uh, of course is very good to tell the patient and explain the patient that the patient basically does not lose the chance at all transferring one superior fluid blastocyst in comparison to just day three transfer. So, so it's that embryo selection and then the embryo transfer, really, that's coming into its own now as we see it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's very nice also to see that more and more patients understand this. So probably we find the right words to explain this, which is also so nice in uh, patient consultations. So now, Olga, as we look towards 2016, what do we hope to see in Russia and also globally uh, from the, the perspective of ART? Where are we going next? I mean, I'm very much under the impression of the session which I have been right now about PGS. So I really hope that uh, in 2016 we will find answers to those uh, cases when uh, embryos after PGS miscarry. And uh, this is uh, quite a few of cases, so that uh, it's really, really sad for clinician uh, and of course for the patient to transfer superior euploid blastocyst according to the test done and end up with miscarriage. How can you explain this as clinician? So that's a huge challenge. And uh, I would really, really like to have an answer. And of course, I would very much like to have a reliable tool. So it's, it's as much a, a maternal factor as a, an embryo factor, and so you're looking deeper and you're hoping to learn more about now you've selected the right embryo, how do you make sure that it makes it to term? That's right. Of course, maternal factor no one has excluded, but uh, what we hear from the session uh, that uh, some of the embryos which are granted to be euploid according to one technique, uh, if uh, they are miscarried and then uh, you retest the DNA, uh, they are mosaic or an euploid. Uh, so this is of course the small group of them, but uh, yeah, just a couple of cases are enough. So we hope 2016 is even better screening. Absolutely. Спасибо. Спасибо.